Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news. So the question is, what's going on with households? And uh, to help with that, I am joined today by Peter from Mozo. Hi, Peter. How are you doing? Hey, Martin. I'm doing great. Thanks. Great to have you on again. And uh, first time from uh, the UK, but uh, the Internet's working very well, which is excellent. Now, look, there's a few things that's happened, right? We've had interest rates rising. RBA has now been holding the rates steady for three months. We know that the fixed rate uh, cliff is still rolling over. The latest GDP numbers were pretty weak on household consumption and the savings ratio was very low. So what's your read on households and specifically how they're dealing with their mortgages? While we are in a period where the RBA has decided to pause the cash rate increases for at least a while, um, mortgage rates are still, for the most part, heading up. So that's going to be putting more more people under more pressure. Um, you know, even in the last month, we saw two of the major banks increasing their lowest basic home loan rates. Um, so, you know, that was a bit unexpected. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of lenders who are using this pause period to build back their margins and um, increase their rates again. Um, so, you know, it's no rest for households. They need to be on their toes and making sure they know what their rate is. Yeah, and I think that's really important because, uh, you know, a lot of people were saying, oh, the cliff is already done. But, you know, CBA is saying, well, we, we, we're way through it, but there's a significant number of people still actually to face that cliff. But the other point is there are still people sitting on mortgage rates that are a lot higher than they should be because they don't necessarily be proactive about um, dealing with those higher rates and looking for the best rates out there. And I find that that's one of the most surprising factors here because it's still the fact is that there are still better rates out there if you look. Yeah, that's so true. You know, there was a lot of um, competition in the mortgage market over the last year or so. Plenty of cashback offers, sweetheart introductory deals, you know, the lenders were put, pulling out all the stops to try and attract new customers. That has calmed right down now. Everyone seems to be hunkering down, but that doesn't mean that things have stopped. It just means that the competition has shifted and now it's, you know, which lender's going to keep their rates lower for longer rather than which has got the lowest rate right now. That's a really hard question to answer. Um, but, you know, it does mean that, you know, there are still opportunities out there to do better and plenty of people who aren't checking their mortgage rates will be paying more than they need to. Absolutely. And there's another thing to bear in mind, of course, is because as people get into difficulty, my stress data has continued to grow. So more people are struggling with cash flow. The banks do have an obligation through their hardship schemes to help people as best able they can if they're in the situation where they've got a financial problem. But there are some limitations to what the banks can do. And of course, we saw recently um, in at least one bank being questioned about how they're actually handling those hardship arrangements in the first place. Yeah, you know, I think that the banks, by and large, do try to look after their customers, particularly since the Royal Commission into banking. There was a lot of pressure brought to bear on executives and, you know, there's a real focus on trying to do the right thing. But obviously, they do work on a large scale. It's not foolproof. There will be people who fall through the cracks. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, just... If you're unfortunately one of those people who's getting into a tough situation, make sure you talk to the bank, make sure you push your case, go through their complaints process if you need to. Um, there is a complaints process that does need to um, have responses to people within a certain period. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to raise your issue um, through whatever channel you can get hold of. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there are obligations put on, uh, on on the banks. And I guess one of the th observations I have from my surveys is that when people get into those financial difficulties and they know that they've got an issue, there's a reluctance sometimes to reach out for help. And I, I find that 
feedback that I'm getting from some of the financial counsellors that I speak with on a regular basis. You know, why didn't people reach out earlier? And in fact, some of the people in the banks have told me as well. By the time people reach for help, it's almost too late. So it's better to go early. Don't be afraid to actually use your rights. Yeah, though it's uncomfortable. No one likes to admit that they're in a bit of a financial mess of whatever sort. Um, but the banks are there to provide support to some extent. Um, so people should be trying to take advantage of that and make use of it. Absolutely. Now let's just turn on the other side of the coin because of course rates have come higher. That means deposit rates are higher. But looking at those rates, they're still dragging the chain relative to the 4% <laughs> rate rise from 0 0.1 that the RBA has inflicted on us. So depositors still need to shop around and they're still not necessarily getting the best deals. Yeah, that's that's right. And um, you know, something I've noticed over the last couple of months is that when the banks are putting up their um, our call deposit rates, it's often for an introductory rate. So something that you only get for a few months and then you're on their base rate. They're not increasing those base rates they're very, very low. So, you know, there are a few banks out there who are trying different things, offering pretty good base rates. Um, so it's worth hunting those down if you're not going to be able to get um, the ongoing bonus rates that have conditions attached each month. Absolutely. And again, it's a matter of not setting and forgetting, but, um, you know, keeping an eye because banks sort of change their formulas quite often in terms of the rates. I've seen some banks, you know, miss out moving rates up once one month, but next month do something. So it's very important to keep uh, to keep an eye on that, because, again, it's quite a simple way to increase the earnings. If you've got savings, you can get a little bit more and that help can help to cover the cost because, you know, the inflation number, although it's come down a little, is still very high. And we know that many households are, are, are struggling to deal with that. Um, what about investors? Um, property investors seem to me to be a bit more active at the moment. And the banks do seem to be a little more willing to lend than over the last few months. Yeah, that is one area where the um, rate hikes out of cycle that I was talking about are tending to not focus is the investment rates. In fact, some banks are cutting those rates for investors. So yeah, it's a very quiet competition at the moment, but it's definitely going on. Um, you know, if you're looking at investment property, um, it's well worth looking around and making sure that you're getting one of the better deals. And I noticed in the national accounts that were published today, uh, the GDP was positively impacted by all the mortgage lending that the main financial organisations have been doing. It's one of the sort of the bright spots. So once again, the housing market and mortgages helps to save the day. <laughs> oh, look, it's um, that's true. But it's also very sad that, you know, we're relying on what's a largely theoretical um, price increase in um, housing values. You know, a lot of people are happy when the house value goes up. But in reality, if you had to sell your house, you'd have to buy somewhere else to live. So how far ahead are you really? You know, I think um, the main um, you know, reassurance that we can take from house price increases, if you do already have a house, is that you're not getting further behind. Um, but that's about it. Absolutely. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out because listings now are starting to rise a little bit more strongly. I noticed that SQM reported the other day. Uh, some of those are older investment properties that are coming back on the market. Now, before we close, just credit cards. So interestingly, a number of lenders have lifted the credit card interest rates. Yeah, we've been seeing some quite sharp increases and from some of the bigger credit card issuers as well. You know, Commonwealth Bank and HSBC in the last couple of weeks have revamped their product ranges. Um, and by revamping, I mean increasing rates, increasing fees, particularly the fees. Um, you know, in return, they are improving their rewards programs, but only slightly. So, you know, if you're being hit with one of those fee increases and you're thinking, well, the rewards are getting better as well, you've really got to make sure that the amount that you're spending on the card is going to be enough to generate a return for you 
that covers the cost of that fee increase. Otherwise, get out, find a card that's got a low rate, no annual fee. There are only a few around, but they do exist. Absolutely, shop around. And I think the critical point there is that uh, you cannot offset a higher interest rate simply because you get slightly more reward points. The earn burn rate on rewards are always well below the difference that you'd pay in terms of interest. So it's really important to shop around. And I do see, interestingly in my surveys, a rise in the number of people who are now have depleted their savings completely. So they're actually relying now on the credit cards to be able to get by each month. And that, of course, from a long-term perspective, is not very sustainable, particularly mm. with, with high interest rates. So it's worth yeah. shopping around and making sure you're on the best possible card. Yeah, credit cards are okay when you can pay them off each month so that you're not getting hit with an interest bill. But the rates on cards these days are, yeah. you know, frequently 20% or even more. Um, so, you know, you have to be careful. Well, Peter, thank you very much indeed for your time. And just to underscore that uh, Moza has a really comprehensive set of tools to look at mortgages, savings, and credit cards use those tools to find the best options because if you do you can save some money on on the way and you know rather than give the profits to the banks you can keep it for yourself yeah the mozo database covers most lenders and banks in australia and you can use our database search function to have a look at most of the products that are available out there and see how your product compares it's nice and simple easy to use Wonderful. Thank you very much, Peter. Have a wonderful day and I uh, look forward to catching up with you down the track. Take care. See you, Martin. Thank you.